I'll continue with the example I was discussing at the end of lecture 17. So, uh, this was the uh, conditional uh, PDF of x 1 given x 2 equal to x 2 and we were given the marginal of x 2 also. Then we had to find constant c 1 and c 2 uh, of course, uh, the criteria is that they should they are PDF. So, the integral in the uh, uh, specified region must be 1. So, we computed uh, we made this computations in the in the last lecture. So, by saying that this integral 0 to x 2 because uh, given um, given an x 2 when you do not draw this your x 1 will vary from 0 to x 2 right, because this is the region of integration. So, uh, 0 to x 2 integral this equal to 1 implies c 1 is 2. Similarly, by integrating this from uh, 0 to 1 for because this is the marginal of x 2 then um, this comes out to be the, this gives us c 2 equal to 5. So, the joint p d f of x 1 and x 2 will be the conditional of x 1 given x 2 into the marginal of x 2. So, the product of the 2 which we have already have now with us since we have computed c 1 and c 2. So, that will be the joint p d f of x 1 and x 2 and that uh, we also computed as, as 10 x 1 x 2 square where the uh, a range for x 1 is from 0 to x 2 and x 2 varies from 0 to 1. Now, is this a p d f? Surely, because it is a product of 2 this we have verified is a p d f this is this we have verified is a p d f. So, the product must also be a p d f. So, there is no need to verify this again though if you want you can integrate uh, for respect to x 1 from the here to here and for x 2 from 0 to 1 and you can show that uh, this uh, integrate. So, so, double integral will uh, come out to be equal to 1. Okay. So, now um, we have to find in the number 3 is compute the probability of x 1 between 0.25 and 0.5. So, to do this I need to compute the marginal of uh, x 1 marginal p d f of x 1 and uh, that will be taking the joint p d f and here um, you will be integrating with respect to x 2. So, given an x 1 uh, this is the line and therefore, your x 2 will vary from x 1 to 1. So, this is the range for uh, x 2. Okay. So, x 1 to 1 you integrate the joint p d f to obtain the marginal p d f of x 1 and so this comes out to be um, yeah. So, you are integrating this back to x 2. So, x 2 cube by 3 10 x 1 and so this is the uh, expression for the marginal. So, once you have the marginal for x 1 then you want to integrate again uh, the marginal from 1 by 4 to 1 by 2 uh, to obtain the probability and the uh, number that I get is this. So, maybe you need to simplify this further and get the uh, right answer. Okay. Uh, then fourth one required you to find the conditional probability of x 1 given x 2 is 5 by 8. So, this is from again 0 0.25 to 0 0.5. So, the conditional density function we already have which is c x 1 upon x 2 square. But so, x 2 is given to be 5 by 8. So, we have to integrate this from 1 by 4 to half 2 x 1 upon 5 by 8 whole square d x 1. So, here this is a simple this thing x 1 square by 2 which is 1 by 4 to half and uh, what you get is 12 by 25. But now, since we have also talked of conditional expectation I thought we will include that part also here. So, for example, you are asked to find the expected uh, value of x 1 given x 2 is equal to x 2 right. And so, um, you will find out the expectation here that means, it will be the joint p d f uh, it will be the conditional p d f of x 1 given x 2 equal to x 2 which is 2 times x 1 upon x 2 square. And since you are finding the expectation here with respect to x 1. So, it will be x 1 into this. So, this is the integral and of course, x 1 varies from 0 to x 2 right. Okay, and you are integrating with respect to x 1. So, 2 by x 2 square comes outside and then this will be x 1 square. So, which is x 1 cube by 3 and 0 to x 2. So, um, you simplify and you, this is the expression 2 by through x 2 by 3 x 2 which is a function of x 2. 
So, which is to be expected, because in this integral you are integrating with respect to x 1 and the limits are from 0 to x 2. So, uh, this will and since x 2 is given to be x 2. So, this will turn out to always be a function of uh, x 2, when you are finding expectation of x 1 given x 2 equal to x 2, which I mentioned yesterday also, when we defined. Uh, and uh, now, this is a straight line passing through the origin. right? So, uh, uh, the function that comes, the expectation that comes out is a function of x 2 and this is a um, straight line passing through the origin. So, uh, so that means, here the relationship is uh, linear, that means the expectation of x 1 given x 2 equal to x 2 is a linear function of x 2. Then, uh, they therefore, follows that expected value of x 1 given x 2, capital x 2 will be 2 by 3 x 2 will be a random variable. See, the whole idea here is and this was repeated earlier also, what we are trying to say here is that for a particular value of x 2, this is what you get the expected value of x 1 slash uh, 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 conditional x 2 equal to small x 2. right? Now, as values of x 2 vary, then uh, this becomes the expect val expected value of x 1 condition on the random variable x 2. And so, the notation is that we call it 2 by 3 capital x 2. So, this is a random variable. And so, for different uh, particular values of x 2, we will get uh, the expected value from this formula. This is the whole idea. right? And therefore, since this is now a random variable, we can again talk about the expected value of here. And this I was I had done this even earlier in the last lecture also the same thing. So, therefore, expectation of um, expectation of x 1 conditioned on x 2 will be just uh, uh, 2 by 3 into expectation of x 2, which will uh, by the formula would be you know uh, integral 2 by 3 0 to 1 x 2 f x 2 x 2 d x and this will turn out to be the expected value of x 1. So, when you take first expectation of x 1 condition on x 2 and then again and that, that comes out to be a function of x 2, then you take expectation again and then you will get the expectation of x 1. So, this is idea has been repeated in the last lecture and I have asked you to verify. So, that means you will uh, you have to compute the marginal of x 1 and then uh, which I think you have already here. Yes, that is a conditional p d f. So, you will have to compute the marginal of x 1 and then find out the uh, expected value of x 1 uh, independently and verify that this it comes out to be the same what you will get from here. And we will uh, further I mean I will continue with this uh, concept and uh, take another example to uh, make this thing things clear try to do it. Um, yeah, so, this this was an example I got from the net uh, roll a die until we get a 6. So, this is the experiment you continue rolling a die until you get a 6 and let y be the random variable which which is equal to the total number of rolls till a 6 comes up. So, you continue rolling the die till a 6 shows up and then you stop right. So, and x is the number of ones we get in this process. So, while you are rolling the die, you keep noting also the, uh, uh, the number of times 1 appears. So, and then of course, the experiment stops the moment a 6 comes up. So, x is the number of 1s you get in this process. Right? Now, you are asked to compute expectation of f x given y is equal to y. That means, uh, the number of uh, dies, uh, number of times you had to roll the die is small y and then this process you want to compute the expectation of x given that you had to roll the die uh, y number of times. So, y capital y equal to small y means that there were y minus 1 rolls of the die which were not a 6. Right? All of the numbers appeared, but the 6 did not appear, because the experiment will stop the moment a 6 appears. Right? So, uh, y minus 1 rolls did not show a 6. Now, therefore, you see um, and x is the number of 1s that come up before the experiment ends. So, that means, in the string that you get the y minus 1 uh, rolls that uh, you made of the die, um, x is the number of 1s that show up. So, when we can treat x as a binomial random variable with the number of experiments or, uh, as a y minus 1 and the probability of occurrence of a 1 is 1 by 5, because remember up to a y minus 1 rolls. 6 is not appearing, right. So, uh, and the other 5 numbers are equally likely. So, uh, the probability of a 1 showing up is 1 by 5, and the uh, number of um, uh, experiments uh, that you make is y minus 1, right. And so, uh, we will treat uh, 
uh, occurrence of 1 as a success and occurrence of 2, 3, 4, 5 as a uh, failure and therefore, um, x can be treated as a binomial random variable with n equal to y minus 1 and p equal to 1 by 5. So, you see uh, the whole idea is that you can uh, how you can compute uh, certain quantities that you require by just uh, realizing how the experiment uh, has been conducted. So, therefore, immediately you can say expected value of x when y is given to be small y is similarly, uh, because for a binomial random variable the expected value is n p. So, n here is y minus 1 and p is 1 by 5. So, without any hassle we get uh, the uh, expected value the conditional expected value of x given y is equal to y. Now, this is again a function of y that is as y takes values possible values 1, 2, 3 and so on the points 1 by 5 y minus 1 uh, will lie on a straight line expected value of x by y that means, con conditional expectation of x given y capital Y is a random variable. Now, conduct the experiment and get an outcome omega that is omega is a string of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 ending with a 6. So, like we conduct the experiment we keep rolling the die till we get a 6 and we record the uh, outcomes uh, at each uh, roll of the die. So, uh, it will be a string of these numbers ending with a 6. So, omega is that. Then you compute uh, how many uh, numbers are there in the string. So, that means, how many times we had to roll the die. So, now you can say that uh, y small y is the value of capital Y at omega, because uh, omega represents a string and y counts the number of uh, uh, elements in the string. So, this is, uh, this is actually our relationship small y is capital Y at omega. right? So, y is the number of rolls of the die to get a 6. right? So, y omega is a random variable surely, because this, uh, this can go on depending I mean dip, uh, when the 6 shows that is not a certain event. So, uh, there is a chance element here and therefore, y omega is a random variable and then you compute the expectation of x given y equal to y which we did right now. And uh, so, that means, you are uh, relating omega with this, because given an omega you computed the y and then you compute the expected value of x given y equal to y. Right? So, that is um, expectation of x uh, given y equal to y is the mapping that maps omega to 1 by 5 y minus 1. Right. And remember, I defined a random variable also as a mapping, because I said random variables associate um, with the uh, uh, sample space real numbers. And so, here also what you have uh, happening is that uh, this expected value of x given y equal to y is a mapping that maps omega to this, where y is capital y omega. So, therefore, uh, this is therefore, omega is mapped to 1 by 5 y omega minus 1, which is a random variable. right? So, now, when you write capital y omega. So, this is the, I mean the idea was to explain to you again in a different way, uh, why we are tr uh, saying that this is a random variable, though it should be uh, clear, because as values of y change, there is probability associated with wh what value y takes. Right, and therefore, this is again a random variable. Okay, um, you can uh, see, uh, you can uh, go ahead and make some more computations. For example, if you look at uh, variance, so again uh, the conditional variance of x given y equal to small y, I know, because uh, I have said that x is a uh, binomial random variable. So, this number I know and uh, for this number also I know. So, if you want to compute expectation of x square given y equal to y, then this minus this is equal to the variance. right? And so, uh, uh, and therefore, um, I can say that yes and this is equal to uh, n p q by the binomial formula. So, uh, uh, p q and n. So, 1 by 5 into 4 by 5 into y minus 1. So, 4 by 25 y minus 1 is the variance and expectation x given y equal to y we have already computed as 1 by 5 of y minus 1. So, therefore, expectation of x square given y equal to y is uh, variance plus this which is 4 by 25 y minus 1 plus uh, 1 by 5 y minus 1 whole square which is 1 by 25 into y minus 1 whole square. And so, when you uh, 
you know, simplify this expression, you get this y minus 1. So, this is a quadratic function of, I should say here, quadratic function of small y. And so, um, the random variable represented by expectation x square given capital Y is a random variable, which is this. So, this becomes a quadratic function of Y. So, I hope this gives you a little insight into uh, what we mean by um, and so, and now another um, role that uh, the conditional expectation plays is as a best approximation conditional expectation as a best approximation. And I thought we should talk about this to give you some more feeling. Um, and this is a value of a random variable x is observed. So, suppose a value of a random variable x is observed and based on this observed value, an attempt is made to predict the value of a set second random variable y. See, sometimes it may be easier to observe value of a certain random variable. And then, if based on that observed value, you can make some uh, attempt to predict value of another random variable, that helps you, because then you do not have to uh, you know ha conduct another experiment to uh, obtain the value of y. But of course, um, uh, the value that you, uh, uh, that you uh, predict from knowing the value of x, may not be the exact one. Okay. So, let g x denote this predictor. So, suppose, so it is some function of uh, the random variable x. So, this uh, denotes this predictor. So, that is um, uh, x equal to x is observed and then g x. So, g of small x is our predictor for the value of y. So, for one value of y and then you observe another value of capital X, then g of that value of x will give you another uh, predictor, predictor for the value of y. Right. So, this is the idea. Now, how to choose g? Because you have to have some concept as to uh, what is the g that is acceptable to you. And so, uh, of course, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the quality that g must possess is that it should be as close as possible to y. So, now uh, the whole idea is what do you mean by uh, closeness here and how can we define. And of course, later on also um, when we talk of limits and so on. Uh, and convergence and probability and law, uh, these things will become more clear. But right now, um, let me say that our criteria, uh, criterion is to minimize expectation of g x minus y whole square. So, if this is my criteria, criterion, uh, then uh, I want to choose that g, which minimizes this expression, this expectation g x minus y whole square. So, expectation of this should be as small as possible. Now, we will show that g x equal to expectation y conditioned on x is the best choice. So, this is the whole idea and therefore, you see another role that uh, the conditional expectation plays. Okay. And the proposition is, so we want to show that um, expectation of y minus g x whole square uh, is greater than or equal to expectation of y minus expectation y given x whole square. So, then this will establish that this is the smallest value of this and therefore, the best choice for g is expectation of y given a conditional expectation of y given x. Okay. So, we will just prove this proposition for you. So, before we prove this proposition, I would like to state a theorem. In fact, uh, the proof is also straightforward. So, the theorem says that if x and y are two jointly distributed random variables and h x is a function of x whose expectation exists. So, then uh, the <coughs> if you have the conditional expectation of f x given y and then we take the expectation again, uh, this will come out to be expectation of h x. Now, this is on the same lines as if you say that expectation of x given y and then you take the expectation again. So, this is E x. Remember, we have already shown this result. So, on the same lines, we are trying to show that uh, expected value of h x conditioned on y and when you take the expectation again, it will come out to be the expectation of h x provided of course, the expectation of h x exists. right? And um, so, I have just written down for the continuous case, I have just written down the, ex, uh, the expression for uh, 
x uh, expectation of the expectation of conditional of h x on y, then it will be minus infinity to infinity minus infinity to infinity h x. The conditional p d f would be f x y x y divided by f y, because this is conditioned on y. And then when since you this turn out to be a function of y. So, when I take the expectation again, it will be f y y d y d x. And this you can see that this will cancel out and it will get expectation of h x. Now, similarly, uh, the result can be stated that if uh, you condition, uh, you take a function g of y and then condition on x, then uh, just reverse the roles of x and y and then you will get here uh, expect ve expected value of g y. That means, your um, uh, expected, expected g of y conditioned on x, this will turn out to be expected value of g y. So, I provided of course, uh, expectation g y exists. So, this is the uh, this and uh, the proof I mean in case x and y are discrete random variables, you can just imitate the proof for the continuous case. So, uh, once this um, theorem is there, we will be using it in uh, to prove this proposition. And so, let me now consider the um, proof of the proposition. So, this is I am considering y minus g x whole square uh, conditioned on x and uh, because in my proposition I am taking condition on x. right? So, now uh, add and subtract expected value of y by x within the brackets. So, then uh, this is expected value of y by x plus expected value of y by x minus g x whole square conditioned on x open up the brackets. So, then this will be y minus e y by x whole square conditioned on x the expectation of that plus the square of this expected value of y by x minus g x whole square then conditioned on x expectation plus twice uh, the product of these two terms. right? And so, the would say the conditioned on x separately and then uh, the expectation that. So, twice e of that. right? So, that let me call this uh, equation as the star uh, denoted by star. Now, see for a given value of x equal to x, this will be a um, function of x. right? Remember, we have shown you that the expectation of y conditioned on x. So, for every fixed value of x, it will be a function of x. Uh, and so, um, for the purpose of you know taking this expectation, uh, because that this expectation is with respect to, uh, yeah, this will be, uh, yeah. So therefore, I can treat this as uh, constant, and so uh, this will come out of the uh, expected sign, right? Since so this is a function of x, and hence can be treated as a constant. So because I'll be computing it for different values of x, this thing, and so for every for every fixed value of x, this will be a constant. So I can take it out of my uh, expectation. Okay. And so, therefore, uh, y minus e of y by x conditioned on x into uh, expectation of this, I can take this outside and then this will be expectation of y minus expectation y by x conditioned on x. Now, here again uh, you see when you bring x inside, it will be y by x y condition on x and this does not change, because this is already condition on x. So, this will become expectation of y by x. I mean this of course, is outside. So, this portion will be expectation of y by x minus expectation of y by x, which is which is 0. right? And so, therefore, the uh, uh, in the star expression, this portion has no contribution, this is equal to 0. And so, the right hand side this reduces to simply the expectation of y minus expectation y by x whole square conditioned on x plus expectation of expectation of y by x minus g x whole square conditioned on x. So, this is what you have right. And um, since um, for a given value of x, y minus g x is a function of y, therefore, by the theorem above, see this will be a function of y only, because this will be a constant for every fixed value of x. And so, by our theorem uh, expected value of expected value of y minus g x whole square conditioned on x. So, for different values of x, this will be a function of y only. So, for each fixed value of x, it will turn out to be expected value of y minus g x whole square. And then, so for dif over different values of x, so the whole thing will become y minus g x whole expectation of y minus g x whole square. Okay. 
which is the same concept uh, is carried over. And similarly, expectation of y minus expectation y by x whole square conditioned on x will turn out to be expectation of y minus expectation of y by x whole square. Okay. I mean uh, this whole square and then the expectation this is what we are doing. Okay. And so, uh, you get that when you you know you, you have this uh, because uh, this is equal to 0. So, I got uh, yeah. So, where is the greater uh, right. So, um, the right hand side when I take the expectation I get uh, see if, uh, we started out from here we started out from here and then since this got 0 then I took expectation of both the sides. So, this became expectation of uh, y minus g x whole square right and this became expectation of uh, y minus expectation of y by x whole square plus expectation of y by x minus g x whole square right. So, the conditioned uh, thing uh, disappeared okay. and since um, these expectations of squares are uh, non negative. So, therefore, I can this because uh, this portion uh, the expected value of uh, y by x minus g x whole square this will be non negative. So, therefore, uh, my equality will convert into an inequality and this is what you have. So, this is what we are trying to prove right that uh, uh, you know for any function of g x for any function g of x if you take this expectation y minus g x whole square here again if you want you can put this then this will always be greater than or equal to expectation of y minus expectation y by x whole square uh, expectation y by x and this whole square expectation of that. I should first say y minus expectation y by x whole square and expectation of that. So, this is what we wanted to prove. So, in other words you, could, you see the process that you are um, uh, you are um, observing a value of x and then computing the expectation y given x and uh, in, in, your, in the in the uh, earlier lecture when I had considered defined this conditioned expectation and conditional expectation and taken this um, discrete case. So, I showed you how uh, and you change keep changing values of x and then you will compute the expectation of y given x right. So, this uh, in a way we are treating as a good approximation for the value of y and uh, when we are um, when our criteria criterion is in terms of minimizing this expression then obviously no other function of g x will qualify to be the best predictor except for the expectation y given x. So, the in this way we are treating or showing that this can also be looked upon as a, a very good approximation for the value of x. So, for different values of x we will compute this I mean <coughs> we will observe uh, possible values of x all possible values compute this and this will give us the different values for of y right. Okay. So, that means you can compute this expectation uh, for um, well um, Okay, uh, yes, there are still a few questions which are not uh, answered, but uh, and hopefully I will continue uh, looking at this again. Now, uh, take this example, you can show that for any real number a, uh, in fact, what we have shown here uh, can be also, uh, you know, this you can show very easily that expectation of x minus e x whole square is always less than or equal to expectation of x minus a whole square for any real number a. And you will do the same thing here, you will write x minus e x plus e x minus a open up the square and so on and then again uh, uh, one part when, when you look at uh, uh, this thing uh, e x minus a. So, this is the constant and therefore, when you are taking the expectation of the product term this will come out and see the second factor will be expectation of x minus e x which will be 0 and so for the same reasoning you can show that this is always uh, less than or equal to this. So, you can do this for any real number a. Right. Okay. Now, uh, look at the um, example uh, of a bivariate normal distribution of x and y right and um, we have already looked at this uh, p d f which is uh, you know in terms of sigma x, sigma y and rho. So, uh, these are uh, correlated uh, 
because I mean I am just taking the general case x and y are not <coughs> necessarily independent. So, in this expression in an exercise 10 uh, in exercise 5 of and question 10, I ask you to show that the conditional distribution of x given y equal to y is the is again a normal p d f with mean this and variance um, equal to uh, rho square no, no why am I writing rho square this should be sigma square sorry. So, this will be uh, sigma x square into 1 minus rho square. Okay. So, this is your um, uh, mean and that is your variance. Now, uh, so therefore, expectation of x given y equal to y will be this mean, right? because this is for capital Y equal to small y. So, this is mu x plus rho into sigma x upon sigma y, y minus mu y, which is again a linear function of y. So, what we have found is that when x and y have a bivariate normal distribution, the best overall predictor, because according to our proposition of x with respect to y turns out to be uh, mu x expected value of x uh, conditioned on y is mu x plus rho sigma x upon sigma y into capital Y minus mu y. And this turns out to be linear in y. So, that is all we can say that the best overall predictor uh, in case x and y are bivariate normally distributed, then the best overall predictor of x with respect to y is this expression, which is the conditional expectation of x given y. It turns out to be this and this is linear in y. So, this is all what we can say uh, to talk of best linear product, uh, linear uh, predictor and so on that is another thing. Uh, that then we have to we have to go about it in a different way and I have to first define what we mean by a linear predictor and so on. So, right now all we are saying is that the best overall predictor in case x and y are uh, both uh, normally distributed uh, the, uh, that means, they have a bivariate normal distribution then the best overall predictor would be uh, linear in y. And similarly, if you were talking of the best overall predictor of y with respect to x, then that will be linear in x. Now, um, let us just further uh, continue talking about uh, uh, conditional expectation. So, now we will show that expectation x y is expectation x into uh, uh, expectation of x uh, expectation of y given x. So, this is what a uh, simple calculation we will do. Now, here of course, I have not written out all the steps. So, for example, uh, when you want to write expectation x y. So, uh, actually uh, the uh, starting expression will be uh, x y into the uh, joint um, d x d y. Right. So, this is the thing, but uh, as we have seen that the joint uh, p d f of x and y can be written as um, product of marginal of x into the um, conditional of y given x. So, therefore, um, this is what I am writing here. So, expectation x y I am writing as x y f x x into f of y given x right d x d y. Now, the thing is that um, uh, so y integral uh, y into f y by x uh, conditional this uh, conditional p d f of y given x. So, this I can separate out and I can write this as y, because this is not a f when I integrate this is a given value of x is fixed here right f y given x. So, x capital x equal to small x. So, I integrate this with respect to y right and then. Uh, so, I can just separate out uh, this double integral into uh, minus infinity to infinity x f x x and then this will come out to be a function of x and so then the whole thing I will integrate as a function of uh, d x and so you can immediately see that uh, uh, this is expectation of y given x and then x times f x this gives you expectation of x into expectation of y by x. So, simple calculation, but so again just emphasizing the fact that this is a random variable and therefore, um, becomes a function of x and so you compute this expectation again and you get this right. So, uh, you know you, uh, you, you are using uh, conditional expectation to compute expectation right. Now, um, let us go through this exercise of uh, computing rho and of course, uh, 
for different situations you can use different uh, techniques to handle it. So, now here um, uh, if you are given that x and y uh, have a bivariate normal distribution. So, this is mu x, mu y, uh, sigma x square, sigma y square and rho. So, this is your bivariate normal distribution and you are given that uh, rho is greater than 0. So, you have to find the conditional expectation of y between 4 and 16 given x is equal to 5. And so, I mean okay, you are given that this probability is equal to 0 0.954, you have to determine rho. So, rho is the unknown here and therefore, you want to determine that. And um, now, uh, from our uh, re this result uh, that x given y is this. So, what will be uh, uh, this thing. Uh, so, from here only or we can, can we, we can write here that uh, expectation of um, y given x, this will be mu y. So, just replace x by y, mu y plus rho sigma y by sigma x, right. And then this will be x minus mu x. So, this is the formula which okay, I have written it here already. So, this is mu y plus rho times sigma uh, y upon sigma x into x minus mu x. That will be this and then since x is given to be 5 and mu x is also 5. So, therefore, uh, this part is 0 and so expectation y when x is equal to 5 is 10. So, the conditional expectation of y uh, or the mean is 10. So, y by x is normally distributed with uh, mean 10 and uh, the formula for the variance would be uh, yeah. So, variance formula for the variance y given x equal to 5 is rho y square into 1 minus rho square, which is 25 times 1 minus rho square. So, this is the variance therefore, uh, this is what I have written here. So, this is normally distributed with mean 10 and variance 25 into 1 minus rho square. So, therefore, I um, will standardize usual thing that we do. So, now computing this probability, I will uh, standardize the uh, variate here, which means I will uh, subtract 10 and divide by the, uh, oh yeah. So, divide by the uh, standard deviation. So, the standard deviation is 5 under root 1 minus rho square, okay. this is what you have. And um, so, this becomes uh, 6 by 5 under root 1 minus rho square. So, uh, this is uh, the uh, C D F for this probability less than or equal to this. Uh, so, therefore, um, I mean the, the cumulative density function for the standard normal. So, this minus this is minus 6 this and again from sim, uh, from symmetry of the uh, standard normal distribution uh, around the origin. Uh, we can write this as twice phi of 6 upon 5 under root 1 minus rho square minus 1, because this can be written as 1 minus of um, uh, phi of 6 upon 5 under root 1 minus rho square minus sign outside. So, therefore, this is what you get and you are given this is equal to 0 0.954 um, or um, 6 upon this is equal to 1.954 by 2, which is 0 0.977. So, if you look up the standard normal tables, uh, the value of uh, z, which corresponds to uh, 0.977 is 2, right. That means, phi of 2 is 0.977. So, this you can obtain from the uh, tables for the standard normal. And so, uh, this means that this number 6 by 5 under root 1 minus rho square should be equal to 2. And so, from here uh, you do a simple arithmetic square everything. So, you get 100 by 36 or 1 minus rho square is 36 upon 100. So, rho square is this. So, absolute rho is 0 0.8, but we are given rho to be positive and therefore, we will take the positive value from here, which gives you rho is 0 0.8. So, that means, x and y are positively correlated. If rho was um, minus 9, uh, rho was minus 0 0.8, then we would say that x and y are um, negatively. So, the relationship between uh, this of course, uh, uh, also uh, throughout this we have also been uh, able to establish that uh, your uh, correlation coefficient or the covariance can measure uh, effectively a linear relationship between the variables, but it fails to uh, show you uh, quadratic relationships and so on. So, we saw that right. Um, 
Yeah, so this uh, comes to uh, sort of uh, our treatment of uh, uh, conditional expectation and uh, how uh, this can be used for computing various things. In fact, for computing your uh, actual uh, uh, this thing, because we have shown uh, that uh, th this result also expectation is expectation x and so on. So, and then here this result we have obtained for you and then I have also shown you the role of um, conditional expectation as a uh, best predictor. So, this is it and uh, uh, let me now uh, discuss uh, exercise 6 with you, uh, which is related to what all we have discussed in the last two lectures, last three, three lectures. So, a fair die is rolled three times, fine, it should be a full stop instead of comma. Let the random variable x be, uh, let the random variable x i be equal to the number that appears on the ith trial for i varying from 1, 2 to 3. And then we define y as the max of x 1, x 2, x 3. Okay. So, the largest number. So, after when the die has been rolled 3 times, then you notice uh, you record the numbers that were that show up and then you take the maximum one. So, y is the value of the maximum of x 1, x 2 and x 3 find distribution function and probability density function of y. So, distribution function means cumulative distribution function and probability density function of y. So, this is question 1. Question 7, consider the joint probability density, density function of x comma y given by uh, f x y uh, of uh, x comma y. So, here it should be x and y as the suffixes are the big, uh, the capital ones and small x y is equal to 2 minus x minus y, uh, x between 0 and 1 and y between 0 and 1, 0 otherwise. Now, here uh, in part 3, I want you to find, yeah. So, uh, part 1 says find the conditional probability density function of y given capital X equal to small x. And then in part 2, I want you to find the uh, expected value of y given capital X equal to x and E y. Then 3, I want you to find out E y through, I want you to show that E y is actually equal to E uh, expectation of ex conditional expectation of y given x. So, what we have been doing in the lecture also, we have been verifying, uh, you know, we have been computing E y um, uh, independently by first computing the marginal of y and then its expectation and secondly by breaking it up into first the conditional probability, uh, a conditional expectation of y given x and then we take the expectation again. So, you have to say that the two uh, processes lead you to the same answer. Now, uh, uh, exercise question 2, I already discussed with you in the lecture. So, you can have an alternate um, uh, expression for uh, the correlation coefficient when x and y are given to be two random variables. Okay. Question 3 is that x and y have the joint probability density function f x y equal to 1. So, y lying between minus x and x and x between 0 and 1. Okay. So, please be careful when you draw the boundaries for y, because you see y um, uh, one boundary is y equal to minus x and the other is y equal to x. So, um, that means your y varies from, uh, I hope you can uh, just make sure that. So, um, you can uh, see uh, along the x axis, uh, you will have one line y equal to x and the other will be in the, in the fourth quadrant y equal to minus x and therefore, your y will vary from minus x to x. So, this is what you have to be careful and then you have to draw the graph of. So, well, given the joint density function, you will compute the uh, conditional, uh, because you have to draw the graph of expectation of y given x equal to x as a function of x. So, uh, you know how to do it, right. You have to compute the conditional prob uh, p d f and then compute the expectation of y given x equal to x and also uh, you have to draw the graph of. So, find out both the conditional uh, p d f's, con uh, conditional p d f y given x and conditional uh, p d f x given y as a function of y. So, you get some feeling about the question 4. So, suppose the conditional probability density function of x 2 given x 1 equal to x 1 is given by this function. Okay. This is the conditional p d f. Uh, so, x 2 positive 
and uh, it is 0 otherwise. So, the region uh, in which it is defined. So, x 1 uh, equal to x and right okay. and that f x 1 uh, marginal of x 1 is um, also given by this function, where x 1 is positive. So, both the variables are supposed to be positive, take positive values. And so, again I want you to find out expectation of x 1 given x 2 equal to x 2 and then also find expectation x 1 and correlation x 1 comma x 2. Okay. So, uh, should be able to do it, uh, because you have all the tools and this thing. Okay. Question 5, yeah, uh, x 1 comma x 2 be a two dimensional discrete random variable, uh, are two discrete random variables with joint probability function. Yeah, so, now you have to compute correlation x 1, x 2 and are x 1 and x 2 independent random variables. So, remember even if your correlation coefficient is 0, it will not necessarily imply that x 1 and x 2 are independent. So, to verify you will have to compute the uh, you know show that uh, for uh, or find at least one pair of values of x 1 and x 2 for which the probability x 1 uh, comma x 2 uh, probability of x 1 equal to that number and x 2 equal to a particular number is uh, not equal to the product of individual probabilities. If you can show that then you can conclude that x 1 and question 4 uh, not independent, but uh, uh, otherwise you will have to uh, go on verifying for all possible pairs, which means you have uh, 8 pairs. So, for 8 pairs if you can show that the product of uh, pro, uh, the probability of the product is equal to individual product of the individual probabilities, then you can conclude that they are independent right. For the for the discrete case, this is the only way you can do it. Okay. Uh, question 6, uh, using the result that um, we just uh, obtained this result for I just obtained it for you that uh, expectation or and sorry here there should be no comma. So, expectation of x y. So, please remove the comma expectation x y is equal to expectation x into expectation of y given x. So, I just proved this result for you. Now, using this result show that covariance again here, uh, yeah, this is okay. x comma expectation y given x is covariance x comma y. So, the comma in the last the two terms is okay, but uh, here uh, when you are saying uh, the result is expectation x y. So, comma is to be removed, right. And then you can, sh therefore, you can use this result, uh, show this result uh, using what we have proved just now. Question 7, consider the joint probability density, density function of x comma y given by uh, f x y uh, of uh, x comma y. So, here it should be x and y as the suffixes are the big, uh, the capital ones and small x y is equal to 2 minus x minus y, uh, x between 0 and 1 and y between 0 and 1, 0 otherwise. Yeah. So, uh, part 1 says find the conditional probability density function of y given capital X equal to small x. And then in part 2, I want you to find the uh, expected value of y given capital X equal to x and E y. Then 3, I want you to find out E y through, I want you to show that E y is actually equal to E expectation of ex conditional expectation of y given x. So, what we have been doing in the lecture also, we have been verifying, uh, you know we have been computing E y um, uh, independently by first computing the marginal of y and then its expectation and secondly by breaking it up into first the conditional probability, uh, a conditional expectation of y given x and then we take the expectation again. So, you have to say that the two uh, processes lead you to the same answer. Question 8 is um, x, y, z are uh, three random variables and n a and b are two constants. Prove that covariance of x comma a y plus b, b is this. So, I had done it for you when the constant a was with x. Now, you please do this it should not be, because remember um, uh, in fact you can immediately do it, because covariance x comma a y plus b is covariance a y plus b comma x and therefore, from that result, but then I have added a plus b here. So, please work it out and show that uh, this result is true. Then, uh, the, uh, the uh, correlation coefficient of x comma a y plus b, uh, there will be no a, because you see uh, numerator there will be a a from here and then in the denominator also when you take the uh, variance of a y plus b, a will come out and so the a a will cancel and of course, a has to be positive here. Okay. 
because in the variance you will take out a only if a is positive, otherwise you have to take out absolute of a. Um, okay. So, let x 1, x 2, x 3 be 3 independent random variables, each with variance sigma square. So, there are 3 independent random variables with the same variance. If we define new random variables, so here w 1 is x 1, w 2 is root 3 minus 1 upon 2 of x 1 plus uh, 3 minus root 3 upon 2 of x 2 and w 3 is uh, a linear combination of x 2 and x 3. Show that uh, correlation coefficient of between w 1 and w 2 is equal to the correlation coefficient between w 2 and w 3, which is equal to half, while w 1 and w 3 are uncorrelated. So, I just tried to, uh, I, I mean the purpose of giving this exercise was that you see that uh, taking this linear combination, some turn out to be correlated and uh, some pair turns out to be uncorrelated. So, this is what you have to show. Now, um, uh, tenth question is a fair die is successively rolled and let x and y denote respectively the numbers of rolls necessary to obtain a 6 and a 5. So, um, in fact, the 6 part we discussed to at length and now, uh, so you are asking for, so x is the number of rolls required when you uh, till a 6 shows up and y is the number of rolls required uh, till a 5 shows up. So, now find expectation x. So, that means, you will write down the um, uh, probability mass functions uh, for x and y and then compute E x, compute conditional expectation of x given y is equal to 1 and conditional expectation of x given y is equal to 5. So, it should be easy computations once we have already handled the case when um, uh, the uh, uh, you had to roll the die till uh, 6 showed up.